retail bankruptcies, and perhaps how to avoid them. That's the topic of my conversation today with Jason DeYunker. He is attorney and co-leader of the Special Situations Team with the law firm of Brian Cave Layton in Paisner. Hello, Jason. Welcome. Thank you for having me today, Robert. So, latest bad news from the retail world. Bankruptcy filing by Century 21, LVMH pulling back from acquiring Tiffany's. What is going on here, Jason? Are these casualties of the pandemic, the recession, something else? What the heck is happening? So, I, I think this is an, a significant acceleration of a downtrend that we have seen for months and months and months and months. Um, and COVID has made the decision-making on these processes heightened and accelerated a lot of the decision-making that has gone on by boards of America across the United States. Uh, basically, people file bankruptcy to conserve cash, mm -hmm. and they are filing bankruptcy after significant efforts, and for the most part, uh, by tenants seeking rent relief to, to close down stores, to, to shut down unsuccessful operations. And when those efforts are thwarted by, by landlords, uh, and, and sometimes their lenders, um, this is sort of their alternative. They've got to preserve cash. They have to make decisions under fiduciary law for the benefit of all of their creditors, whether it's their senior lender or the guy who sweeps up at the store you know, every day before they close. Mm -hmm. All of those people need to be taken care of or, and they need to maximize value of assets for all of those people. And in the many cases, uh, the bankruptcy process is a way for them to do so. Uh, the, yeah. Well, they're really caught in a bind. It sounds like in so many cases, it's the only way out, but that isn't the case, is it? I mean, are, are there not some alternatives to going the insolvency route? I think there would have been outside of COVID. Inside of COVID, I think for folks that have really significant geographic uh, footprints across the country, many, many stores, particularly mm -hmm. in the major markets, Chicago, where I live, uh, Los Angeles, New York, Washington, D.C., any, Atlanta, Miami, any major city you can think of. Um, the, the, there's been a significant amount of pressure from both sides that has been placed on these, these tenants. Uh, they have a significant decrease, obviously, in sales, store over store. Um, they've paid too much in rent in many instances to secure premium locations. And the, the landlords themselves, if it's one or two stores in a 25-store you know, store mall, uh, they can withstand a few moves in and moves out. When it's you know, 15 of 25 in a, in a given shopping center, then mm -hmm. you stop having the ability to say to one tenant, hey, we understand we can cut you a deal, right? Because so right. much of what they're dependent on is, um, you know, they, they need that constant cash flow to pay their lenders. And if they give a deal to one tenant and the, another tenant learns about it, they start to, you know, they kind of set off an avalanche of Yeah, well, the whole, mall could, the whole mall could be under attack, so to speak. I mean, when the anchor stores are going down like they are, it almost leaves no option for the smaller stores in the mall to stay alive as well, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's what you're seeing. In fact, you know, you're seeing sort of major deals now put, getting put in place for anchor tenants like the JCPenney transaction, which I'm sure you're aware of, and I'm, I'm sure your listeners are aware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is going to change not only the makeup of those stores, right? Uh, if, if they are, if the entire business concept has changed, it's also going to affect every, all the minor stores, right? Are pe people aren't going to go into a mall because you've got an Amazon fulfillment center in there, right? Yeah. That, that, that doesn't drive foot traffic to a, a mall. So if you've got a, you know, whether it's a mom and pop bookstore or a forever 21, I don't even know if forever 21 exists anymore, but if you've got a, an apparel store, a, a jewelry store, whatever else, you relied on these anchor tenants to basically push people to come in to then come to you. You know, you're right. a secondary uh, a reason for them to come to the mall. Yeah. If it's a, if, yeah, if it's an Amazon fulfillment center, nobody's coming there, maybe employees. Well, and I think the, the, intention, the intention there is simply to transform the mall into something entirely different. 
to yes. it. You know, Amazon is talking about using those for that very purpose. We also hear about dark stores and, and things like that. But I mean, this is a very dark picture you're painting for me here. And I want you to say that there's some way out <laughs> for these, uh, for these uh, businesses. I mean, their hand, they have to handle their investors, shareholders, lenders, vendors, management, boards. Is there any, uh, what, what advice would you have to a, comp to a retailer that maybe would like to try at least in this very difficult time to survive, to come out the other end whole? Is, are there other avenues to explore or is it just give up the ghost and forget it? I always think that the, the, the biggest thing you can do is communicate and communicate what your issues are and, and really open the kimono up with the various parties that you mentioned that are mm -hmm. sort of involved with your business, investors, landlord, uh, service providers, uh, vendors, customers, everybody. And I, you got to hope that some of them will ride with you and you can establish to whomever is the fulcrum creditor, hey, look, you know, give us three, four, five months. On the other side of this, this is how we're going to reshape our business. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem with these, these companies that have a heavy geographic footprint is they can go back and tell anybody they want to that they can't pay, but they still owe the money. And there's no other methodology really other than consensual agreement to uh, get people to agree to take less money in exchange for, uh, you know, walking away from a debt. And so you can't complete a transaction. Mm -hmm. You can't get somebody to come in and buy you if, uh, you know, you've got so much debt that it's just going to cripple the business going forward. So the bankruptcy is intended to do that. Yeah. Back in the good old days, Robert, when I, you know, when I first started doing this, you know, people used alternative methodologies to accomplish the same things. Uh, you know, ultimately, a lot of these businesses are going to have to, there's going to have to be some changing of hands because there's going to have to be some new capital injected. And, mm -hmm. you know, what that may end up being is that if you're the, you're the owner of a business and you have 15, 20 stores, but, you know, pre-COVID, you were doing okay. Uh, and and post-COVID, you can show someone a path to profitability. Uh, you're going to be able to take in new investors. It may mean that you no longer own the majority of the operation. But, you know, maybe you can go back and talk to your landlords and show them, hey, look, if I have to go into bankruptcy and liquidate, you're going to get X. If you ride with me, mm -hmm. if you agree to uh, a, a non-bankruptcy process, you know, I can get you Y and it's a little bit more than X um, and it might be a little bit faster than X mm -hmm. and you won't have to pay a lawyer and everything else in order to get your money out of this. Well, you know, maybe we ought to be defining our terms here because the word bankruptcy can mean more than one thing. Are we talking about chapter 11 reorganization? Or are we talking about absolute selling off of, ab of assets and liquidating the company? Well, very rarely does anything happen in a chapter seven, which is sort of the traditional, our additional vision of what a liquidation is. Uh -huh. Many of the chapter, many of the retail cases that are getting filed are chapter 11 cases, but they're sales cases. They're being filed to complete a transaction. Now you can have a variety of different kinds of transactions. You might have a transaction where somebody just says, Hey, we're selling all of our, like pure one, we're selling every good we have, right? We're mm -hmm. no longer going to be in business anymore. Or you might have certain chapter 11s that are filed in order to preserve some parts of the business like Brooks brothers close some stores, maybe liquidate a little bit of inventory, but ultimately on the other side, there will be a business called Brooks Brothers. It will have a much different geographic footprint going forward, but it'll sell similar products or maybe different, you know, maybe better products mm -hmm. uh, via, you know, internet commerce. Um, oh, okay. Well, there's a good point. Is e-commerce the salvation of retail? I mean, not everybody can just go online and, and, and make up for the loss in brick and mortar sales, but is that a viable option for a number of retail operations? I think so. Uh, I mean, I, I, as someone who, who tends to buy a lot of clothing, I've still bought clothing during the COVID period. Some of the clothing I've bought has been set off to the side for when I'll be able to go back into an office and wear a suit again. But <laughs> You know, I, I think it depends on what area of commerce you're involved in and, and, you know, looking at clothing, for example, you know, plenty of places have made a, a successful transition into primarily a internet business. Uh, I think sales, uh, generally speaking, across the board has dropped as a result of COVID, not just because people have less money, perhaps, in, in, in large segments of our population, but also because you're not going anywhere. So who are you dressing for? 
Uh, I mean, certain, I think certain aspects of, of retail have survived and done well during this period of time. And my guess is if you don't have to pay, you know, it, it, people like, we like to think of a retail operation as being certain, you know, like the, the brick and mortar and, and, and the employees, right? Those are your expenses and mm-hmm. shipping. But, you know, you've got a lot of different costs that go into it. When you employ that many people in a retail environment, you're not only just picking up sort of the cost of an hourly wage, but you pick up, frankly, as a lawyer, litigation costs. Employees sue their employers a good bit. People walk into stores, they trip and fall. You know, there are Especially so many now things. now with the health hazards yes. that be yes. in, in the workplace. More opportunities than ever for litigation. Absolutely. So you talk, you're talking about a whole host of, of expenses that you can put to the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully you take the opportunity to, to really look at what you're selling and maybe condense some of it and really fo- refocus your attention on, on sort of where you really are making money and where you're not. Maybe you don't have to carry as many products or maybe there are certain loss leaders you don't have to carry anymore because you don't need them because you're not a brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot of different ways that people are going are gonna to definitely look at their businesses uh, find a process that gets their new investor, new owner comfort, reorg, restructure, and come out on the other side with a brand new business with the same name. Because there's, mm-hmm. as you know, there are a lot of value in these names. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you finally gave me a little bit of optimism there at the end. <laughs> the possibility that maybe they'll come out the other end, at least, you know, there'll be a Brooks Brothers, there'll be a this, there'll be a that of in, in some way or another. But um, Jason uh, D. Yunker, thank you so much for help guiding us down the, uh, the path of considerations that a retailer might face in this very difficult time with these little glimmer of possibility there of a light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks very much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. Take care.